Field Sports Nation member Joe Wood, or Joe Wood MBE as we now have to call him, likes to make things hard for himself. A while back we followed him hunting rabbits with a muzzle-loading brown best musket. Today he's after deer, with a First World War vintage Mauser rifle with open sights. Yeah, it's quite an interesting rifle really. It's a First World War German Mauser, so it's a Gewehr 1898 pattern uh, rifle. Uh, made in 1916. It's a pretty iconic rifle for the German military from the First World War. Obviously the British were using the short magazine Lee Enfield at the time and this was the one that the Germans were using in the trenches against them. It's got a quite an illustrious history the development of the Mauser rifles and they're continuing to make obviously stalking rifles and hunting rifles today. This one I picked up a good few years ago, put it on my firearm certificate and I've been shooting 200 grain full metal jacket military spec ammunition with it. I'm a member of a local club that I use it at and it's um, only over the last 18 months or so that I had the bright idea of trying to get it so it would shoot deer and get a correct deer legal round for it. It's 7.92 or 8 millimeter by 57 Mauser is the cartridge and the, the rounds that I've normally been making have been 200 grain full metal jacket rounds um, with quite a heavy load of powder and they go with a fair old crack but clearly they're not deer legal in this country without a soft point on them. And it took me quite a long time to find soft point 792 millimeter bullet heads because they're not particularly popular in this country. They're quite big in America, but not in this country. Um, so eventually I found some, and these are 150 grain soft point uh, Sierra Pro Hunters, I think. Um, and they work a treat and, and is obviously now deer legal. So the challenge is now to try and, try and get a deer with them. So for first light, we were up at one of my favourite spots, which I call the horizontal high seat. I'm um, just overlooking a bit of a valley. Um, I think we saw three row, two does and a buck on the opposite side of the boundary. Uh, then we saw four month jack in total, a buck, a doe and a follower, and then another doe on the same side of the boundary on the wrong side. Um, we gave that a good hour at that location, but didn't get anything. Before moving on, Joe wants to check one of the salt licks that is set up around the estate. I think they're sort of aniseed flavour from bushware. I was a little bit sceptical about using them because I know a lot of people um, use them but with mixed success. And I put them out on these posts. This is just an old fence post cut down and then driven into the ground with a couple of screws on the top. And these have got holes in so you can put them through the screws. And it probably took six to eight months for the row to start visiting them. Um, the muntjac haven't seemed to be interested. But over the last year since I first put them out, I've now got regular visitors to them and you can pick up the same deer coming at similar times of day to, to, to use it. Um, particularly the younger deer seem to be more attracted to it than the older ones. So I've got a couple of these out across the estate now and I put cameras in front of them just so it aids the monitoring of the deer and other things that, you, you, that sort of come through and use them. It allows us just to be a bit more selective with our um, culling and things like that. So they're quite useful bits of kit really. Um, so what we did is move back down to the car, had a cup of tea, <laughs> a cigarette, and then pushed ourselves uh, a bit further across onto the estate. When we were going down there, we saw the, the row again on the other side of the boundary, unfortunately. Tried to squeak them in, but they wouldn't come, just even for a look. As we pushed further down, we bumped another muntjac on a hedge line as we saw another one further away. We decided to go for the one further away, um, which took a bit of quick work to get into position. Um, it was a doe, and when we got to a little pit, uh, managed to get into position, but she was probably 60 metres away and winded us. Um, you could see her sort of work, trying to work us out. She headed off, I managed to squeak her back. She came back for another look, but didn't come close enough again. I've got to be within 50 to 70 metres really to take an accurate shot with this. difficult because if I'd had, if I'd been on the sticks, I might have had the angle to shoot, but I think if it had been on the sticks, she wouldn't have come in as close, possibly. The predecessor of this was the Mauser that was used by the Boers extensively to shoot the British in the second Anglo-Boer War. And they were shooting, you know, sniping Brits at ranges in excess of a thousand meters. So it just shows the accuracy of this rifle or the predecessor of this rifle. But the challenge with this now is because the minimum range is 400 metres, and I'm realistically only wanting to shoot deer over iron sights at 
50 to 100 metres, the challenge is to work out the point of aim so that I can aim off appropriately to strike the deer in the, in the kill zone. Um, and I've done that with this ammunition. I worked quite extensively to try and work out where my point of aim was going to be to hit the chest of a muntjac or a row at kind of that range. It's good fun doing all the testing anyway because you get to shoot it a lot of times and work through all the loads. But it has taken me probably 18 months to get to this stage now where I can take it out and start using it to stalk deer. Um, so the fun is in developing the load, testing the load. Now the challenge is to try and get a deer with it. So we missed out on that one, came back round um, and I'd seen a heat signature in this wood block just next to the car on the way out. Um, so I knew that there was something in there and actually we saw one crossing the road as well when we were having a cup of tea. So as we came back down, we went into position just next to that wood block and saw a, a, a muntjac buck. This is one time when Joe might have got a shot if he'd brought his usual stalking rifle. With the, with the scope on, it would have given much greater clarity through the trees. I'd have been able to see the branches a lot clearer. Um, I would have been much more confident of a of a hit in the trees on the second muntjac for sure. Right. But you enjoy it anyway. Yeah, it's good fun. <laughs> you know, it's not very often you get to go out with such an old rifle. Yeah, 107 years old and iron sights set to 400 metres. But, you know, it's good to get it out. And like I said, it's, it's lighter and more user-friendly in many ways than a modern rifle. But... Um, I say it's just interesting to take it out and give it a go. The challenge is the sights. You know, in low light conditions, you're not going to be shooting anything particularly easily. Um, I'm confident in the shot placement, um, but ultimately you've still got to get quite close in order to deliver that shot. So that's the challenge. Um, there's been plenty of deer moving around today, but we've not had the opportunity to get close enough where we can accurately take a, you know, a clean shot. So I think that's the biggest challenge. But apart from that, you know, I'm shooting deer legal ammunition. It's a perfectly accurate rifle. You know, it, it works just as well. It's just the user who just needs to uh, get a bit better. To join the Field Sports Nation and support our work, go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash membership. And for all your stalking kit, check out kitfinder.co.uk.